Thank you, Riv. And with that game, uh, Maple just mentioned Cali Trolls coming up big. 21K damage. The next highest on the team, 13K by Rek'Sai to champions. Yeah. So, I mean, out of the top lane with a Gragas, that's an enormous amount of damage and pressure that he was putting on the map. Very rare, too, because those damage dealt to champion stats, uh, so much of that damage ends up coming in lane. Uh, and then as you transition to team fights, it's usually like AD carry focused. You almost never see a top lane at the top, let alone by that much. Yeah, yeah. and I absolutely love this game from Cali and the pick ban from teammate was really good. They saw the fiddlesticks coming. That was the big thing here is they set up their comp to deal with that. And they let Cali do Cali things. They were talking about like not looking at Korea, not looking at other regions. They need to do teammate things more often because Cali is only lost when he's playing tanks and he's had one game where he's lost on Aurelia. Yep. That's yeah. it. When he's playing something that's carrying, he carries. Let's touch on that a little bit more. Champions like the compositions as they played out against each other. You said they predicted the Fiddlesticks pick. So it's, gr it's great that Dignitas yeah. was trying to get a Zingy onto a comfortable champion, but you're picking a Fiddlesticks into a, uh, an explosive casket that's going to knock him away, the Tremor Sense that's going to let you know where he is so he can't come over walls onto yeah. you. I mean, they had so many tools to deal with the Fiddlesticks, and we saw it manifest in very few successful ultimates. Yeah, I don't remember. He, he got a few kills. What, one, I think. There's he no got a kill, he got a kill yeah. early. They're, the team itself, they predicted the Fiddlesticks. So why pick the Fiddlesticks? Yeah. Like, they needed to move away from it. Gragas, Morgana, Sivir, even Zed. Like, everything could avoid that Fiddlesticks. I, I feel bad for Azingi on his first week of the LCS. I mean, that is a pretty rough first week. Not having the right runes in game one. And then... Being on your big champion that everyone is expecting you on, it's like, oh man, Azingi's fiddlesticks into one of the worst situations. Yeah, everyone was expecting him on it though, yeah. including uh -huh. Team Eight. Well, and that's the thing. We have to give them credit for doing their homework and preparing a team composition that was tailored specifically to counter Dignitas and their new jungler. Absolutely. What they also did well, I felt, was the fact that they put a lot of focus into that top lane. Cali Trolls played very well on his own. But on top of that, we have recognized Gamsu as being one of the stronger points on the on Team Dignitas, and they put a lot of focus there with the Rek'Sai into the top lane and trying to keep him down. I'm glad we're talking about Porpoise, because this guy's gone a little bit under the radar here. He's 10-0 and 21 this weekend. He didn't die. He's basically pulling a Santorin from a couple weeks ago, being a very supportive role, but Team 8 has so many carries on it, like Cali Trolls, sometimes you have Slushy who can pick mm -hmm. up the slack, but the fact that Porpoise Pops is able to set those people up from the get-go is his biggest strength. I agree, his rec side, this, you said, deathless, mainly because he was enabling Cali Trolls as well. Those two working together, once again, is something they're gonna have to do next week when they face the top competition, Team Liquid and Team Solo Mid. Yeah, so, all right, looking forward to it. Yeah, we'll see if they can kind of roll that momentum forward into the coming weeks. Well, with